It's time now for us to look into the Word to consider misplaced faith and unanswered prayer. Dr. Kroll, since you're looking at the role of faith and getting answers to our prayers, I would assume you believe faith is quite important. Well, Don, everyone knows how important faith is. All you have to do is ask them. Uh, We put our faith in the skill of people all the time, people that we don't even know. For example, you and I fly a lot, and I have to put my faith in the skill of an airline pilot whose name I do not know, whose face I have never seen, a person I don't know at all. I may never have flown that airline before. I have not met him or her as the pilot, and still, I have to put my faith in the skill of that pilot to get me to my destination safely. You're driving down the highway. You come to a bridge, and it's a bridge that spans a mighty river. You may never have driven across that bridge before. But most of us do not stop, get out of our car, and check the superstructure of that bridge. We simply have faith that the bridge is going to carry us across the river. When you go to a restaurant, you sit down at the table, and the waiter brings a menu to you. You read over that menu, and you make your selection, and you have never been in the kitchen of that restaurant. You have not checked the cleanliness of that kitchen. You have no idea what is behind those swinging doors. And yet you have faith. Now, why do you have faith? Well, if you're going to live with any degree of normalcy in this life, you have to have faith in people and in things. And that's true for the Bible as well. Faith is a dominant theme in the Bible. Now, think about this. The Hebrew noun or adjective for faith is used more than 50 times in the Old Testament. But it's really not until you get to the New Testament that faith comes into full bloom. The Greek noun or adjective is used more than 300 times. So faith is one of the key ingredients in our understanding Scripture. And as common as faith is, friends, it's sometimes difficult to define. When I want to know the definition of something, I do what you do. I go to Webster's Dictionary. And Webster says that faith is a firm belief in something for which there is no proof. Now, to be honest with you, I don't like that definition very much. I don't think it really gets at the heart of the matter of faith. In fact, someone has even defined faith as the power of believing what we know to be untrue. And that's exactly the opposite of what faith is. Now, most definitions of faith relate little to God. For example, there's that popular definition today that says, faith is the daring of the soul to go farther than it can see. Well, that's good sentiment, but what does that have to do with God? Faith that does not relate to God really is not biblical faith. It's certainly not the kind of faith necessary if God is to answer our prayers. And that's what we're interested in this series of messages How to get answers to our prayers. What is it that blocks God from hearing and answering my prayers? Well, in my book, When God Doesn't Answer, I define faith this way. See if you agree. Faith is the confidence in the righteous character of God that fosters trust and hope, even when our circumstances foster doubt and despair. Now, isn't that what praying is all about? Our circumstances look grim, so we pray to God in faith. We trust His righteous character to do what is best for us. Now, today on Back to the Bible, we want to focus on a lack of faith as a significant prayer blocker. One of the reasons why we do not get answers to our prayers is because, quite honestly, we don't have faith in God. Does failure to believe God have anything to do with our prayers not being answered? Oh, it sure does, friends. You know, one of the classic passages on faith is James chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives liberally or generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. Now, these words of James are punctuated with implications of faith. If you have a need, you must ask God for help. And God will give you what you need, but only if you believe Him. If you don't believe Him, you are torturously tossed about by your own doubts. That's what James is saying to us. 
Now here, James's bottom line on faith and prayer is this. In baseball terminology, pray, believe, and run to first base with God's blessing. Pray, doubt, and strike three, you're out. It's just that simple. If faith in God makes the difference between answered and unanswered prayer, then I think we dare not pray without first investigating our own faith. We need to see if some flaw of faith keeps God from answering our prayers. Now, it can be pretty confusing when you read the Bible about faith. The writers of the Bible talk about the word of faith in Romans 10, the measure of faith, Romans 12, the spirit of faith, 2 Corinthians 4, the assurance of faith, Hebrews 10, and oh, a whole lot more about faith. It seems that everything in our Christian life relates to faith, and that includes prayer. But I can hear some of you right now, you're saying, it's hard for me to believe God. I don't have the gift of faith. Well, certainly it would be nice to have the gift of faith, but not everybody does. And maybe you don't need a gift. Maybe you just need a faith lift. Now, before we look at how God can lift your faith, I want to explore with you what kind of faith you need to have faith in God when he answers your prayers. You know, when Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, he talked to them about spiritual gifts. And one of those gifts was the gift of faith. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 9 and 10. Now, like the other gifts, the Holy Spirit graciously gives the gift of faith to whomever he chooses. But not everyone receives this gift. If faith is your gift, how would you know it? Well, I think you'd know it because you would believe God when no one else was able to believe God. Your faith in God would be stronger than you could ordinarily explain. Let me give you an example. John had not been feeling very well for a few months. And to his wife, Evelyn, and their children, John Jr. and Terry, it was evident that something was seriously wrong. Well, Evelyn finally convinced John he had to go to the doctor, and he did, and his worst fears were confirmed. John had a rapidly growing cancer. Now, John began all the medical treatments. He began radiation treatments, and at the same time, his family and he began praying that God would heal him. His daughter, Terry, was especially intense in her prayers. She spent an hour or more every day reading her Bible, claiming the promises of God, and praying specifically for her dad. And soon Terry became convinced that God was really going to heal him. Now, the others had confidence that God could heal John, too, but Terry had something more than confidence. She had God's gift of faith. She had never been more certain of anything in her life, and you know she was right. John's cancer disappeared, and it never returned. Now, the Holy Spirit may not choose to give you the gift of faith. It really doesn't matter, friends. That's not what the writer of Hebrews had in mind when he said, Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. If it were, then only those of you who had this particular gift could be pleasing to God. And that's just not true. You don't need the gift of faith to believe God. But you do need faith. I think it's important, then, for us to contrast the gift of faith, which is mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, with the grace of faith, which is mentioned throughout the New Testament. Now, you and I are saved by grace. Ephesians 2.8 tells us that. We serve God in grace. Hebrews 12 tells us that. We sing with grace. Colossians 3. Often the word grace is used of the virtues that guide our Christian life. Paul referred to this grace of giving, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 7 and 19. He even urged them, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, Colossians 4, 6. You see, because grace relates to those virtues by which we please God, then it's little wonder that Peter prayed, grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Now, you don't need a special gift of faith to have your prayers answered. God gives that gift only to a few people. But you do need the grace of faith to have your prayers answered. And I want you to know, my friend, that the grace of faith is available to every believer. 
God doesn't give every believer the gift of faith, but he does give us the grace to believe. And that simply means that you and I have adopted a lifestyle of faith. We trust the promises of God in every area of our life. We have trusted the promises of God for our salvation. We've trusted the promises of God to lead us if we're married to that right person. We've trusted the promises of God to lead us to the right church. We've trusted God in faith for everything in our life. And now we're faced with prayer. And you may be faced with a serious need, and you've taken that to the Lord God in prayer. I want you to know that when you take your need to God in prayer, and you believe God will actually hear your prayer and answer your prayer, that's not the gift of faith. That's the grace of faith. That's the grace that God gives to us to live our lives every day. You know, we Christians need to live the way we were saved. We were saved by faith. And it's in this daily faith that we need a faith lift. Now, I don't need God to give me a special gift to understand that he's going to hear my prayer and answer it. What I do need is I need strong faith. I need the constant grace of God's faith in my life. God has made significant promises to people like you and me, but we need our faith lifted to claim those promises in prayer. You see what happens when we don't have a faith lift? Our prayer is blocked. We really don't believe God is hearing us and God is going to answer us. And so like the man that James mentioned, we're tossed about. We're like a wave on the sea, just driven to the shore and beaten up when we hit the rocks on the shore. Now, I don't want to live that way, and I don't think you do either. That's why it's important for us to have faith in God when we pray. Now, of God's promises and the faith that God says we need in order to claim those promises, a great deal has been written. I especially appreciate what Harold Lenzel wrote. Listen to this. When we pray for peace of heart and mind and do not have faith to believe this petition will be answered, it's a sin, for there is a promise to that effect. Philippians chapter 4, verses 5, 6, and 7. If we pray for the necessities of life without faith to believe that God will supply them, this is a sin, for there is a promise to that effect. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Now, you see, what Harold Lenzel is saying is absolutely right. The prayer that arises out of faith hitches its star to God's promises. And if you and I don't know God's promises, if we're not familiar enough with God's word to know what God has promised us, then the chances are pretty good that we're going to pray, but not pray in faith. The failure of our faith keeps our prayers from being heard by God and answered by Him. And the problem is not that we don't have the gift of faith. We don't need the gift of faith. What we need is faith. We need the grace of God's faith in our lives to be lifted. We need a faith lift. We need stronger faith to believe that God is hearing us and he's answering our prayers. Now, today on the broadcast, and again tomorrow, and again the next day, we're going to look at what it means to have your faith lifted. The prayer that rises out of faith always looks at the promises of God. And you don't need a special gift to trust God's promises. Jesus said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Matthew chapter 17, verses 20 and 21. Now, that's a pretty strong promise, isn't it? And the problem that we face in praying and getting answers to our prayers frequently, friends, is we really ask, but we don't believe God is going to hear us. We genuinely ask for something we need, but we're not quite sure whether God is able to meet that need. We ask, but we waver. We doubt. We don't recognize that God has given us faith to believe in his character. And it's the righteous character of God that fosters hope and trust. Even when our circumstances foster doubt and despair, it's the righteous character of God that we must place our faith in. Now, today, you may have a strong need in your life. You were saved by faith. But are you living your life today by faith? Have you committed your life to the Lord God in faith? Are you praying in faith? Or when you pray, are you suspicious that God isn't really going to answer you? 
You see, the Bible clearly says that one of the great blockers to our prayer is that we do not have faith. We need our faith lifted. And I think the failure of faith is a major contributor to the failure of prayer. It has a very debilitating effect on us, friends. It is a great prayer blocker. But it doesn't have to be. Your faith may not be gigantic, but, old friend, as a Christian, faith is always present in your life. What you need is a faith lift. And the best way to get a faith lift is to focus on God and His promises. So if you need that kind of lift today, spend some time in His Word. Spend some time in prayer and spend some time believing that God will actually hear you and He will answer you. If you need a faith lift, God will give you that faith lift today. Just trust Him for it. Ask Him for it. And then believe that He'll give it to you. Thank you for listening to Back to the Bible. Join us again tomorrow. God bless you.